Hey y'all, welcome back to the kitchen here at My Table 3. I am so glad you're joining me for this follow-up video to my January video. And if you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Carrie and I am a homeschooling mother of one, a wife to an amazing husband that works hard for our family, and uh, I guess you would say a, a baker. I do have a small bakery business as well as a food blog that I do. So I'm also a working stay-at-home mom. And one of my passions is canning and food preservation, which leads us to this video. On Sunday the 14th, I was uh, able to release my first video for January, which is set, um, it is hosted by Sutton's Days, Lisa over there in four, four jars. So I do want to say just off, off the top here, you guys are not required to comment on this video to win the wonderful prize that she's getting away. So this is just a video that I wanted to use um on my channel to hopefully help and inspire you guys to use your pantry staples that you can so go over if you have not seen my how to can beef stroganoff go check out that video i'll try and link it here i'll also put it in the description and so today i thought i would start out by showing you guys how to use the beef stroganoff so a lot of the times if they are new recipes to us we may wonder how would we use this is this something my family would eat is it one dimensional? Like, can I only use it for beef stroganoff? This one here, I am happy to say it is very versatile. I know of at least three different ways that I can use it here in my house that we enjoy. So I thought I would share those with you. I'm gonna actually show you how I make two of them and talk to you about the third one, just for the sake of time. These are all super easy applications. You can basically wing it as you go. Now, if you're not a more experienced cook, which they're not hard at all, you, I can give you some guidelines as we go as to how I do them, but most of us are going to be able to cater these two or three meals that I'm going to show you using these to fit our family's needs. Or if you're a smaller family, maybe it's just you or you and your husband, then you'll know how to cater that to feed two and to taste the best for you guys. So first we're going to jump into, and I am going to show you the traditional beef stroganoff. And as we go in this video, I'll answer some questions that you guys had for me in the comments. Those comments are so exciting. You guys, I have been reading them. I'm trying to keep up with them, but you guys are just amazing. You guys want to win those pressure canners, and you're so encouraging. So thank you so much for commenting, all your nice comments. Um, a lot of you ask about my chicken apron. <laughs> it is actually given to me by one of my very dear friends, Amanda, and it's actually an egg apron for out in my coop, which I raise chickens. But it's so beautiful, I don't use it out there. I use it in the kitchen, right? So I will link that below because I believe you can find it on Amazon if you want to check it out. And I'm just so excited. I know that the video inspired a lot of you guys, and now I want to show you how to use it up because who wants to put food on the shelf that we're not going to eat, right? Because that would be a waste of time and finances. So let's jump right in. The first we're going to do is the traditional beef stroganoff, the way many of you will use this. And I'm going to show you two different ways to serve it. I am going to serve um, it over egg noodles for my teen because he is a noodle hand. Um, but for my husband and I, we'll probably have it a low carb application, which is served. You can do that two ways. You can serve it over cauliflower rice, which we are going to do today because a lot of people eat stroganoff over noodles or rice. So definitely cauliflower rice or mashed cauliflower to replace your potatoes. It tastes amazing. Just prepare your mashed cauliflower. And if you're not sure how to prepare mashed cauliflower so that it tastes the best, I have a recipe on my blog that I can link for you below. It just uses the head of fresh cauliflower. But you can also do the same concept with that recipe using bags of frozen cauliflower, just the same weight. So there are two options. I'm going to show you how I serve it today over both the noodles and the um, cauliflower rice, but first I'm going to show you how to make the stroganoff. The second one I'm going to show you is how to take this base and turn it into a delicious beef pot pie. So a lot of times pot pie is a family friendly meal because who doesn't like um, meat and veggies and a crust on the top, right? So we'll talk more about that as we go and then I'll share a little bit of how you can turn this beef stroganoff base also into a quick and easy beef stew. So it's snowed in here. I don't have anything else to do and there's nowhere I'd rather be than spending this time with you guys. So let's jump in the kitchen and get started. 
All right, guys, so I'm gonna make um, a big batch. So I'm gonna do two jars. This is our beef stroganoff base. So I'm gonna carefully, and this is already hot. I have it on, look at those chunks of beef. Is that not amazing? And you can see the mushrooms they have shrank quite a bit. So they release some of their umami or their juices into this beef broth, which makes it even tastier. So there is that. Now, a lot of you guys asked me if you could use, or several of you did, your um, dehydrated mushrooms in this recipe. I honestly probably would not, but I'm not somebody that deviates much from approved recipes. Now, if that's something you decide to do, I would definitely go ahead and rehydrate them first. And that is what I did here. I want a few more mushrooms in this, so I'm gonna dehydrate these. I mean, I rehydrated these, and I'm gonna put them in there. I'm not gonna add that broth, that water that I soaked them in, because I'm going to um, add some more beef broth. Um, so, there's that question about your dehydrated mushrooms. The um, reason I wouldn't put them in dry is, is that it may change things up enough to where it alters the recipe. It may soak up too much of the broth as they rehydrate, and you don't want any of those things happening. Let me see if I can pull you in closer. And, oh, you guys, this smells amazing. Okay, another thing a lot of you are not used to, and I can totally understand because I was not either, is the tomato paste and beef stroganoff. No, it's not typically something when I make beef stroganoff from scratch that I put in there, but it's really good in this recipe. Um, so I do put it in. It gives it a very deep, rich flavor, so I like it. Now, I did have a wonderful viewer saying that she thought it was too tomatoey for her, so she was going to reduce it to one tablespoon, I think, next time. So, you know, while I'm not somebody that changes, tested, you may find another recipe. That was probably what I recommend. Try this one. Thankfully, these book recipes are in. Um, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. They are in small batches, you guys. It shows you how to do two quarts or four pints at a time, so you could definitely do small batches and um, try it before you make a lot of it. So I'm going to taste the broth really quick for seasoning to see if we need any salt or garlic powder or anything like that. No, I think it's actually I think it's perfect just the way it is. That's what makes this so easy. You don't have to make beef stroganoff. You know, you don't have to add the extra mushrooms. What I'm going to show out of this batch here, and a lot of you also ask, well, did it make enough gravy? I always have additional stock. This is beef broth that I've canned. I'm going to add it in there. So that was a pint. And since I am going to thicken this, I am going to add probably, so that's two cups. I'm going to add a total of about four extra cups of liquid. And you may think, well, it's too liquidy now, but it's going to thicken up. Another thing I can do at times as well is I have this onion soup. It's beef broth with onions. I have canned it. Um, I'll try and link to the ball recipe for that. You can also use that as extra broth so you get extra noodles in that as well. I do have some other ingredients over here. This is the sour cream that we will add. Now, remember, this is a guide. You guys can add less stock or more stock, whatever you want to do. This is basically me just showing you a couple ways you can do this. So now this is almost up to temperature. Um, when it, we're going to go ahead, I'm going to add just a little bit of broth to this. This is flour to thicken it. The recipe says two tablespoons. Since I doubled it, this is four. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of that and stir it around. This is going to thicken our gravy. And I have my, the noodles and the cauliflower on the stove. The cauliflower is done. The noodles are going to be in the works to serve this first um, recipe over. Okay, I'm just making sure there's no lumps in my cornstarch. And this is a great way to meal prep too. Say you want to do a meal for today and get ahead for tomorrow or another day in a week. You could make this a double batch, triple batch, depending on your family size. And then you could eat one of the meals today or one of the days you make this. And then you could put the other one in the freezer or the fridge for a later time, which is so helpful. So cook once, eat twice. That's one of my favorite ways to meal prep. Because I don't always have tons of hours. Oh gosh, you guys. 
Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna leave that in there because stuff like that happens. <laughs> I dropped my whole bowl in the stroganoff. So yeah, don't be a mess like me. Let me clean up really quick. Yeah, that was so, how do you like that? One thing about me guys, <laughs> if you want bloopers or not boring place to be, this is it because I'm always doing silly stuff. My hand just slipped. And there we go. So now we're going to let this come back to a bowl. I'm going to, up to a bowl. I've got that drop bowl on my mind. Let this come to a simmer and thicken up. And when it thickens up, I'll bring you back and show you what I do next while I clean up this mess. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm bringing you back. You can see this has thickened up. Now, how thick you want this is going to vary on your um, desired thickness. So you can thicken it more if you want to but i didn't want it to be too thick because i'm also going to use this as a pot pie uh, base and over noodles and cauliflower rice so i'm going to put the sour cream in it calls for you know you can put as much as you want really because you're not i'm going to put this is a fourth of a cup which is four tablespoons i'm going to start there and i'm just going to kind of stir it in this would also depend on your preference if you want more you don't even have to put it in there if you don't want to but stroganoff typically has a sour cream mixed into it so i'm going to do this really quick my, my heat is off i don't want to cook it anymore right now so there it is you guys the worcestershire or worcestershire that have been corrected uh smells so good in this it's really savory and it's just really delicious. So, do have the cauliflower rice ready. And the noodles are still cooking. I'll show a picture of it here in the corner because after they uh, finish, I'll take a picture and put it here so you can see what it looks like over egg noodles. You could do this over a mashed, like I said, mashed potatoes. And I was gonna tell you guys about thickening this. I did use flour in this. If you wanna keep it low carb, you could use your favorite low carb thickener. There's xanthan gum. There's Glucomonin that they also call Glucci for short. Those are all great things to thicken this low carb. Give me just a second. Okay, so here is the cauliflower rice. I am going to get some of this delicious beef and gravy, our stroganoff base. And like I said, we like it about this consistency. You can thicken it up if you'd like to. But look at that. Is that not delicious looking? So this is what we're going to chow on, chow down on today for dinner before my husband starts his 10-hour shift. So this is a very filly meal. And then let me go ahead and show you how to take this same base and um, make another meal for later, a beef pot pie. All right, guys. So we really enjoyed that, that lunch. My son and husband loved it. Uh, my son ate his over noodles. Um, I said I would show you what it looked like. So here's a picture of it. You may have seen it on the thumbnail too. It's absolutely delicious. It's so rich and savory and it's just really good. So Nate, what do you think about it? Did you like it? Good. Right. It's good. You don't like to be on camera, but I tried to get him to do a taste test for me on camera, but he would not do it, but that's fine. So. Let me give you a couple of tips there. You saw that I added extra beef stock that I had canned. However, if you don't can your own stock or maybe you don't have it and you don't want to buy it, a great shelf stable um, alternative would to be have some beef bouillon, like the powder. And I love this brand here. I, I've got a big case of it from Amazon. I'll link that below. If you don't need that much, you can find this at Walmart. Usually it is near the, on the ethnic aisle, near, near the Hispanic foods, but use any kind of brand that you'd like. Sorry, I got distracted, but it's just a packet and each of these packets will make two cups of broth. So very good shelf stable um, alternative to beef broth if you don't can it yourself or if you find yourself without any uh, cans of it or cartons of it in your pantry. So. Um, let me see if I can, anything else I've done. So we ate, one thing that you didn't see me do off camera and I forgot to record it, is I did, after we ate, I added a half a cup of raw onions to this and I turned the burner on low and I put the lid on and I let it simmer just to cook through uh, the onions. And now we're gonna make the pot pie. I'm just gonna make it in a nine by 13 with just a top crust. I made the crust 
um, last night and put it in the refrigerator. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. You've seen me make pie crust before. You can use store-bought pie crust. You can do it in a pie plate with the top and the bottom crust, whatever your family um, does. Basically, you would make it the way we just made it now, thicken it, and then we're going to add some more things. I had a jar of my home canned baby carrots. I opened those up and cut those up. So this is probably about a cup to a cup and a quarter. I cut up two potatoes into small cubes and I rolled those until tender, not mushy, but just tender because they will cook more in the stove. You can totally buy a can of um, potatoes from the store if you like to, or if you're one of those people that like to can potatoes, you can use those. And the next thing I'm gonna add is a can, uh, one cup of frozen peas. You can also put green beans, corn, whatever you want to in this pot pie mixture. But if you want to keep it low carb, you can also do radishes. Radishes are a really good um, alternative to potatoes. Um, you can peel them, wash them, peel them, and then cook them just like you would a potato and then add those. You can leave out the carrots if you want to, and you could add green beans instead of the peas. And again, you could thicken it with xanthan gum or blue cheese. So, you also can use a low carb pie crust. I have a keto and gluten free pie crust on my website. I do some mini chicken pot pies over there and that crust would also be delicious on this pot pie. So check out the link there for those pot pies and a crust that you could use on this recipe if you're needing the gluten free or keto version. So let me turn you down and show you how I'm going to take these leftovers and make a new meal for us. Okay, so here is what is remaining. You can see we put a dent in it, but there's still plenty to make another meal for us. Now, if you have a larger family, you would definitely probably have to use three jars, but two is enough to make a stretch for us for two meals, maybe even two and a half, because we're gonna add more to it. Um, like you saw, my husband had his on cauliflower rice. Um, I will probably eat mine the same. Nate had noodles, like the traditional. And now we're gonna use the leftovers to make a pot pie. So we have, the beef stroganoff in there, we thickened it. You saw me, you would do the same thing. This is um, two potatoes and I just cooked those until soft. We're gonna add those. This is one cup of frozen peas. You know, you could put now, since this is um, done, you can um, basically put any kind of ingredients you like in your pot pie. This is my canned carrot. I'm just gonna fold those in and because this is already cooked, your stroganoff filling. This is also going to be ready for your pot pie pan. And again, you could keep, you could thicken this more if you want to, but you know, it'll cook down some. But just look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Let me lift that up so you can see it better. How gorgeous. And it's so hearty. And guess what? You now have a beef stew. So here's your third recipe using this beef stroganoff base. So here is a beef stew. Now you just need to heat all this through until it's hot and you can serve it with a crusty bread like Nate's having with his stroganoff. You can serve it with crackers, but it's a wonderful Philly meal and super easy shortcut to beef stew, right? But we're not making beef stew. We are making a beef pot pie, right? So there's your beef stew. That's recipe number two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use this nine by 13 pan and go ahead and fill this in. Now this nine by 13 pan, I'm gonna go ahead and cook it and then I'm gonna wrap it tight in foil and you can either freeze it or you can put it in the fridge and um, reheat it the next day or whenever. It'll actually be good in your fridge for two to three days and or actually up to a week when it's cooked. So, okay, that's not, I don't wanna make sure that wasn't too hot, but just look at that. Does that not look like a hearty, pot pie and I am going to roll out my crust that I made. This is actually enough to make two so you could actually divide this into two or use a throwaway pan but I'm going to roll this out show you how I put it on there and then bake it and I'll show you the final results. And so I'm going to get this in the recipe in the oven. <laughs> You guys, I have told my husband that filming makes me nervous still. So you saw me make the mistake with the bowl, this pie crust. It looks janky, but it's gonna taste good. And now I'm stumbling over my words. So hopefully you found these three different ways to use your stroganoff in a jar that we can together for January helpful. I uh, hope it encourages you to get out there and branch into new things. Even if you're an ingredient canner, oh, come on, try it just once. 
do it in pints because this is a small batch recipe and you will not regret it. So you guys be sure to check out my next January video on the 25th of January and I'll be showing you another meal in a jar that I love to do as well because again it's winter and I'm stocking those meals in the jars up because when it comes summertime I'm going to need quick food when I'm in the garden. So until the next time you guys I will see you later.